Hi guys, look what we have for you today. This is the Tudor Black Bay 41 Ceramic and oh, it's a handsome looking watch I think. This I've been lucky enough to review because one of my subscribers, Stephen, who's been at both of us in events, brought this along and said I can have it for a few weeks just while I review it. And so a massive thank you first of all to Stephen. Thank you very much, sir. Um, let's face it, it's a handsome looking watch, isn't it? It really is something a little bit more special, a little bit different from the normal Black Bay models. The big thing on this, obviously, is the fact that it's the case is made of ceramic. Now, ceramic, this is a harder substance than steel, which makes it harder to scratch. It also means that if you were in some bizarre way to scratch it, it would still be black underneath, as it's black all the way through and through. So, in theory, it... Yeah, this should be the perfect substance to make watches out of. It is obviously more pricey to make them because ceramic is harder to machine, but it does have one slight drawback. Being that it's so hard, it can be brittle. Now, I don't know if they've improved this over the years, but this, you don't want to drop a ceramic watch on the floor, whereas metal will simply deform, ceramic can shatter. It's very rare. I've heard of one of my friends doing it, but it can, you know, just be careful not that you want to drop any watch on the floor but yeah i think they are cracking looking watches though let's talk sizes this watch as the name would suggest is 41 millimeters it is 14.5 millimeters thick the look to look is 49.8 or coming on for 50 mil and the strap size is what was it 22 i believe it was on this watch now let's check out that dial the dial itself is just it's so minimalist it is lovely um as you can see here it is an all black affair just apart from that gray writing we have there the tudor geneva and black bay master chronometer we'll get we'll talk a little bit more about master chronometer side of things in a bit but what i like is you just have that oh so simple dial it just looks great apart from you have these fully loomed hour markers and hands and my god do they have a bit of loom on them this watch really does shine it has to be said now the other big thing i like about this is the handset itself the simple fact is we have the snowflake hands there and the diamond tip to the seconds hand this is good because i like the fact that even if i were to place these this handset on the table you would instinctively know what brand it is. And I think it's so nice when you can get a company which can be recognized automatically, even if it comes down to just the handset. And this watch definitely does do that. Now, as we come past that, you can see we've got this domed crystal going on there. We've got this nice bit of distortion at the edges there. It is a sapphire crystal, obviously. Now, past that again, let's have a listen to this bezel. It feels absolutely precise. It really is a nice feeling bezel. Has it got back play? Tiny, tiny little bit of back play there. Let's just line that up and it lines up obviously perfect. One thing I do like as well is the bezel insert has still got the like sunburst straight graining going on on it there. One thing I am surprised, being that this watch is a, you know, has got 200 meters of water resistance, I am surprised it hasn't got a loomed pip up there. You know, I, I must admit it would be quite hard because if you were going to have it loom, you can have black loom, but to be fair, that doesn't glow that much. And I suppose if you were to have the same loom as there, it might kind of stand out a little bit. You know, it might be a bit too much contrast against the black of the insert. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, to purchase it, you've got a coin edge bezel arrangement going on there. It's nice and easy to actually turn, so no problem at all. Now, the case itself, as you can see, we have this kind of matte finish. But what is nice, we have this polishing effect there. And ceramic, when polished, gives a really nice mirror effect like you see there. So rather than just having a completely all matte case, you do get that little bit of polishing which goes on. And you see that just catches the light. And I think it looks all the better for that. Now, as we come around here, we have a signed PVD crown there. And let's just unscrew it. It, it feels lovely. You can hear it pop there. Nice big stem going in. 
and it feels really solid. Some watches you can unscrew them and you can get lots of play on the crown. Not that it's necessarily a bad thing, but it just feels so solid on the Tudor one and it screws in absolutely perfectly with no problem at all. So anyway, as we look around the back of this watch, you have this rather nice looking movement here. The movement actually in this watch is the MT5602U, uh, was it 1U? Now the 1U was only made for the ceramic model. This is where it's all been blacked out and it's an absolute stellar movement. I put this on the time grapher earlier and it was pulling plus one second. Now, one of the reasons for this is not only is the movement chronometer spec, but it's also the new meta tested. Now, I think I'm gonna have to do a video on what meta testing is, but this really pushes the envelope when it comes to the testing of the movements. The actual movement itself is a 25 joule, 70 hours of power reserve and a silicon hairspring to boot. So it really is kind of a, a very nice um, movement to be fair. Very top grade movement in the back of this. Now, one thing I would say is when I looked on the back here, you can see there are you know signs of where the strap um, yeah has been changed. And that's obviously a spring bar going across there. That obviously is no problem at all. You know, it, it isn't really any problem. But what I did, I think it was on this side, I just simply brushed them out. And you can remove those marks ever so easily. I think it was that side, it could have been on that side. Of, oh no, I think it was on that side. As you can see, you just simply run along and you can get rid of these marks. So it shows how easy it is actually to remove any of these marks. Normally the marks itself isn't um, marks on the ceramic, it's actually material left from the spring bar on the, on the actual ceramic. So I just thought I'd just quickly remove that so you can see that it's not the ceramic being marked, it's actually the residue of the other item being ran across it. So it is something you can do. Now this watch, if I zoom out here, does also come on a second strap. So you get this strap here. This strap is a hybrid leather and rubber strap. And I must admit, it feels absolutely lovely. It's got like a, you do feel the leather kind of uh, feel there, but on the back, it's so obvious that it is a rubber strap. The actual clasp itself, if I lift this up, it is a, it is a nice clasp to be fair. You All you do is simply place this through. There we go. Line it up and then through and it all locks up nicely. So, and it's got the Tudor logo on there, which is very nice. But it also comes with this NATO strap at all uh, as well. And I think the NATO strap is also absolutely stunning and works really, really well with this one. Oh, just a quick one. If you're um, interested what this is, this has come in from Daily Watches and it's really plush. I'm going to do a little video on these. So I've got a couple of more things from Daily Watches. They were a guy who gave me Bob. So if you're interested in one of these, let me know. I've got a discount code and I do believe, a heads up, I will receive 10% of any orders made with my discount code. But yeah, it's a really nice bit of kit. So anyway, let's put this on my wrist so you can see how it looks. A quick wrist check. I'm wearing my um, Zin. Let me just undo this. My Zin EZM2, he says. Can I get this out? Oh, there we go. My Zin EZM2, which I think is an absolutely stellar watch. That was my first Zin back in the day. Mr. Bob, what do you have there? Oh, we have a Nomos. Now, that's an automatic model come in for review. So that will be coming up soon. Now, my wrist size, I should point out, is seven and a quarter inches. Let me just quickly put this on. Um... He says, have I got, yep, that's right. And there you go. I think that is a really handsome, good looking watch. You see what I mean about the beveled edge there being highly polished, you get the light reflect off it. It really is a super watch. I think it's lovely, but is it worth the extra money 
versus a standard ceramic, uh, standard Black Bay. Because when you think, this is what tops the range when it comes to the Black Bay models. So you can buy a standard Black Bay, um, I think with that meta testing, but still chronometer specs for a thousand pounds cheaper than this. This comes in at 4,200. And I think you can get a meta tested one for again, uh, around about 1,000, but it's gonna be a steel model. Now, do you think it's worth the extra thousand pounds for this ceramic bodied model? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, all the best guys. Stay safe out there. Bye.